Welcome friends to another r slash nuclear revenge video. Today we've got a crazy story of revenge on somebody who cheated on OP's daughter. But first, a story from DVE Mail, The Bank's Man. This is an old family story told as a story, I heard it directly from my mom. In the 1930s, during the depression in America, a lot of farms were lost to bankruptcy and bank forfeiture. Very often, the bank would hire a local man who knew the local farmers and growers and who would cooperate with the bank and sheriff in getting these farms and houses repossessed by the bank. Certain members of my family owned a small orange orchard in California's Central Valley that was holding its own, barely. Part of running an orange orchard at that time was a practice called smudging, where during a cold snap you could save the crop by burning oil in the smudge pots all over the orchard and keep the worst of the heat away. Smudging required the use of fuel oil to burn, and if you couldn't get the fuel oil to keep the crop alive and unfrozen, you'd lose more than half the value in a single night of freezing temperatures. So growers would cooperate to buy into a fuel oil truck and share some of the operating costs. These trucks would go from farm to farm dispensing oil, and each grower would buy enough oil to put back into the trucks the amount they used for their orchards. Now it turns out that the local bank's man in the area was a somewhat nearby neighbor of my family who also had his own small orchard. A certain relative of mine was a boy at that time, and he would earn extra money working for the bank's man in his orchard. The bank's man was a tyrant and a bully who hurt his wife and children and who savagely hurt my relative any time that the work done was not to his satisfaction. After yet another beating, the bank's man informed my relative that he was going to make certain that the smudge truck did not have enough oil for my family's orchard, and that when the crop was ruined, he'd make sure that the bank got the orchard. Times were very different then. My relative did not complain to his parents or tell them about the problem he was having with the bank's man. He only talked to his friends about the situation. So a few families in the area were aware of the bank man's plot. One of the jobs that the man insisted on was my relative crawling down in the hatch of the fuel oil truck and dragging a small pump hose inside so that the man could manually pump out the very last dregs of the oil at the bottom. This was also considered unfair by the other growers because the next farmer in line always got a little less oil than he should have and had to pay to make up the difference. No one said anything because everyone was afraid of the man's tyranny and temper. My relative decided that he'd had enough and he was going to quit work for the man and try to find other work for the growing season. So he told the man he would be quitting and perhaps unwisely, he also told the man that he knew that the man was the one making the oil count come up short each week. The man hurt my relative until they were unconscious as retribution, but he chose a bad time to do it. Since my relative was laying unconscious out in the orchard, the man had to be the one to climb down into the bottom of the oil truck to set the pump hose in place. My relative wasn't actually unconscious. He was laying on the ground faking. When he saw the man climb down inside, he climbed up to the hatch and apologized to the man for making him mad and offered to help. But when the last of the fuel oil was pumped up, my relative pulled up the pump and then locked and closed the hatch, trapping the man inside. After about half an hour, the fumes inside made the man pass out. My relative went home, and one of his friends arrived to pick up the truck. The friend drove the truck to the oil depot and filled it up, then he drove it to the next farm in the rotation. The bank's man was missing for several days before anyone took serious notice, and eventually his body was found in the tank. It was almost immediately ruled an accident, and no investigation was ever opened. His body was so saturated with oil and fumes that they had to bury him in a closed casket. The local funeral home in Strathmore refused to take him, so the funeral had to be held in Fresno instead, a long ways away. Almost no one attended. But the sons of several local farmers and growers spent a lot of time providing free labor, both to the widow and to my relative's parents all year that year. My relative's parents almost certainly knew what had happened to the man, but they didn't ever talk about it. Does this story leave you feeling conflicted at the end? Considering how awful of a person the bank's man was, but the outcome of what happened to them and what that man experienced at the end? Do you feel they deserved it? Do you feel like either side was never right at all in this situation? Do you feel almost horrified from this story? Let me know how you guys feel in the comments down below. 
By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Psycho Steve 10 mm I'm going to heck for this and I do not care. Back when I was growing up, I always seemed to float between two worlds. In school, I would be considered to be a quiet nerd that was left alone. At home, I hung out with a pretty rough crowd and was always getting into trouble. Between the drinking, the fighting, the drugs, and other dumb stuff, I always tried to keep those two worlds separate. I got bused to a different school due to being special ed, so keeping the two separate was pretty easy for the most part. There were at times some bleed over. At times, I was in woodshop class and the style at the time was to have the velcro straps hanging off the back of my high tops and another student grabbed them causing me to fall. He ended up in the hospital for catching a claw hammer in the face. Between having to deal with the psychological counseling and the trial, I decided to avoid this kind of petty crap in the future. I sent the message and it was heard loud and clear. I pretty much had the reputation of don't mess with him, when he snaps he is dangerous. As I cleaned up my drinking and drug use, I figured I would leave the violence as well. Not that I wasn't good at inflicting it on people, but quite the opposite. I was too good at it and having fed the darkness within, the high was better than any drug. Fast forward some years and I'm attending a local community college and while I'm no longer running the same violent crowd, I still see them every now and then. I'm taking some classes with my friend's little sister and having seen her go from bratty little girl to a woman kind of made it like she was another younger sister to me. She had started dating a guy who I knew from reputation to be a real piece of work from high school. This guy was a year younger than me and the rumors floating around was the school did nothing about how he would touch girls in the hallway because he was the star wide receiver for the football team. He lost a scholarship to the state college due to his grades but the rumor was he had a few R-word allegations that were swept under the rug. I inform her of what I know about the guy, but she doesn't listen to me. After class, I approach the POS to inform him that his girlfriend is someone I think of as a little sister and to tread lightly. She attended a school function with a jerk, and then she was missing from all of her classes for the next week. So I drop off the notes at her parents' house. I find out the jerk had messed with her drink took advantage of her at the function and left her there under the bleachers for people to find. To make matters worse, he even gave her a few STDs. The revenge on my part was I knew where he parked for classes every day. So I skipped class and waited for him to go return to his car to beat him down. Due to him driving an SUV, I knew he kept a broom in there for cleaning off his car for snow. I had taken a pair of brass knuckles and I went to town on him. I grabbed the broom and carried him into the woods to stick the broom where the sun don't shine. I left him bent over a picnic table with the broom sticking out of his butt like I'd just planted a flag. I stroll into the local pharmacy to pick up some hydrogen peroxide to clean off the blood, and I go visit her older brother at the prison to give him a heads up. I tell him what happened, what I did, and to keep an eye out for him on the inside. I must have a guardian angel as the list of people who wanted him dead for doing similar things was quite long. I got questioned about him, but I gave them nothing and pointed them towards the people I suspected might have been victims of him in the past. The Black Hole Revenge I made a few inquiries into where this jerk was going to be sent once he got out of the hospital. Turns out he was going into one of the camps at the same prison the older brother was at. Even though it was a different unit, it was still close enough in the sphere of influence that he could be gotten to. I was given a few names to make contact with and drop off some cash for the commissary to grease a few wheels to get at the jerk. I figured he would have been shanked and it would have been done with him. Turns out the jerk was jumped by 10 guys, one of which infected him with HIV. They slid his rectum to make it wetter and to increase the possibility of infection. After doing all of the messaging, I was approached by someone who played a cell phone video of the whole thing before I went into class. Turns out he died of sepsis a few weeks later. The orderly was pocketing the antibiotics and pain pills. He was double dipping as he was paid to do this and he sold off those pills as well. The only witness to my part of the revenge was now dead and all that was left was trying to rebuild little sis. I know I'm going to heck for this, but I don't care. Maybe the nightmares I had for years after this will be a penance enough, but who knows. If this story is real in any way, yikes. 
If this story isn't real in any way, still yikes, that's a pretty darn crazy story. Our next story is from an anonymous poster. Closest friends conspired together to put me in heavy debt. Started a business with them eight years ago. Everything was going flawlessly. Then COVID came and we had to shut down very quickly, resulting in $80,000 debt. We were four, so about $20,000 each. We all have a good career going and $20,000 ain't that big a deal for any of us. But then they all conspired together for months to throw me under the bus, so I'd have to pay the whole $80,000 by myself. Never ever consulted me about anything, they blamed me because I was handling the money, saying I somehow stole from them. I don't even know how I could steal $80,000 when we make $250,000 in gross profit a year. Also my parents are loaded, nobody knows that. I don't give a single freak about money, but they don't know that. I hide it very well, even for my best friends. With zero proof, they got the whole debt under my name with interest. Those were my closest friends that I've known since we were little. So I made some false customer complaint to get one fired, right when he signed his new house lease. I called the cops, anonymous tips on one of them driving drunk, and last one, I paid someone to mess up his car costing him close to $10,000. Wrote to their parents, since they all loved me on Facebook, that they should be ashamed of their kids and quickly blocked everyone from everywhere. Revenge was sweet. I'm gonna be honest, if you call up the cops and tell them you have a tip on one driving drunk, do they actually really follow up on that? From all the stories I've heard, it sounds like police don't really respond or follow up on anything unless it's like, big enough for them to literally dispatch or is like a serious first degree charge. And our final story of the day is from Piano OK 7591 Cheat on my daughter? How about I make you fail the most important exam of your life? Five years ago, my daughter Allison started dating her now ex, Chris. They seemed happy together, and I started to like him. However, they slowly started to drift apart, and he started acting distant to her. Allison would sometimes come to me crying that they barely spoke anymore. Eventually, Allison discovered that Chris was cheating on her. My first boyfriend cheated on me, so I know how terrible it feels to be cheated on. She called me crying because after she confronted him, he yelled at her and called her a witch. Chris came over to my house and tried to spin a line of BS about how Allison was crazy and was cheating on him, but she already called me and showed me screenshots of his conversations with other girls. This was where I got an idea to give him what he deserves. He decided to waste years of my daughter's life and make her cry, so I decided to do the same to him. I pretended I was on his side and reassured him that Allison was being unreasonable. After he left, I told Allison my plan and she was all in. Chris went to a really good college on a $40,000 scholarship. He was all set to graduate college with a great degree, no debt, and a very high paying job. In order to renew this scholarship, he had to pass an exam to renew his scholarship. One thing to know about Chris was that he loved food. He was 6 foot 2, and I've seen him eat enormous amounts of food. And I was a good cook, and he loved my food, especially my brownies. So the day before the exam, I baked him brownies. Unfortunately for him, they were laced with a box of laxatives. I also put laxatives in his coffee. The next morning, he drinks his coffee and eats half the brownies I made. I'd say he ingested about 20 doses. As if that wasn't enough, he took several more brownies to eat on the way to the exam. He ended up failing the exam and couldn't afford to go to college. Apparently, he got super ill and had to go to the bathroom several times during the exam. I decided to gift him the rest of the brownies as a present in order to make him feel better. He probably had diarrhea throughout the rest of the week. Failing this exam completely changed the trajectory of his life. He was going to go get a degree at a prestigious university, but now he has a low paying job, working minimum wage. I guess it doesn't work like this for wherever that guy was going, but apparently some places if you were ill while taking the exam, some places will actually allow you to retake it. That said, if it was your kid in this situation and your kid got cheated on in a year of their life basically ruined like that, would ruining this guy's college education and potential future be a reasonable amount of payback or is it just a little too over the line even for a cheater like that who went and broke your own kid's heart? I'd like to know if you guys think it was too far or if it was actually fair for what happened. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to see another revenge story that was even more insane than the ones in this video, click on that left video. Or, if you missed my latest video, click on the right. But with that said, I'll see you all next time for some more stories.